In this demonstration, we want to take a look at what we refer to as the dynamic cross-section view. To see our cross-section view, we simply select our corridor, and in this drop-down, we can select the dynamic cross-section view or open the cross-section model. And so we'll select that, and then I'm going to select or inside of an open view, or we can open a view and then select inside of it. So I'm going to select view 7 here. And the first thing just to note is if I use my mouse and roll the wheel on my mouse, it will zoom in and zoom out based on wherever your pointer is. If I hold my wheel mouse down and drag, it'll pan. If I hold my shift key down and roll my wheel mouse, I will stretch or shrink vertically. If I hold my control key down and roll in or out my mouse, I stretch or shrink horizontally. Once you have a particular orientation that you like, underneath view properties, we can tell it to maintain the particular offset that we have. So I can say center on my current offsets. And then as I toggle down, it'll maintain that zoom ratio. Or if I just want to center the backbone and ignore my end conditions and just review my pavement structures or shoulders, you can do that as well. Or you can go back to fit selection. A few more things in here to take note of is we also can instantly show our cut and fill for end area calculations, which is nice to find out just some rough areas, volumes of our design at the time. So if we want to know, for example, are we way too much in cut or way too much in fill, we can just turn those on. And as we go down the job, those will accumulate. So let's turn those back off. We can, if we're debugging templates, for example, turn on no points and look at those as well. Another nice thing about this is the navigation of the cross section. I simply type in my value and press enter and it'll take me to that particular location and cut that cross-section. Uh, one little tip on that, make sure that you keep your mouse over the area where you're keying in before you hit enter or it won't accept it. Another thing to point out, and I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, full screen now so we can work with it a little bit better. You'd have some options here with the right mouse click. One is you need to do a single station edit you can still do that in Select Series 3 and modify that particular cross-section. However, I don't necessarily suggest that as a best practice simply because that eliminates all processing and locks that down. It would be better to use, utilize point controls and let the processing correct the cross-section versus letting the cross-section be overrode. Another option with the right click is to place temporary dimension lines. Let's say, for example, you wanted to monitor the cross slope of your pavement. You can place a temporary dimension line in there, and then as you toggle down your job, you'll see that value updated. And then we can also remove the temporary uh, dimension lines. Another nice thing that we can do is we can locate a cross section by data point. And so if I right click in here and say locate station by data point, I come over here and I click in my plan view and as I drag or snap to something in my plan view or I can key in a station wherever that's at and accept it and then it'll show me that cross section then in my dynamic cross section view which is really nice as well. And so that's kind of some of the main things with a dynamic cross section view that are uh, useful to know and understand. Uh, this takes you to your very first station in your corridor. This will take you to your very last station. This goes backwards one station at a time and this goes forward one station at a time. And just to show you in the view attributes here, this is the cross-section model that is loaded and you can then specify a specific exaggeration here as well if you wish.